Hi all. Welcome to the fourth session on infinite sequences. In the last class, we have discussed about definition of limit of a sequence. Definition of limit of a sequence. Let's recall the definition once more. Suppose we have the graph of the sequence here in this plane and uh, assume that there is an L here. I am taking epsilon greater than 0 so that I have an L minus epsilon here and this is L plus epsilon and I am drawing the uh, horizontal lines this is the horizontal line L and here I have L minus epsilon here I have the line L plus epsilon when we say that limit of a sequence limit of a n equal to L we know that uh, the terms of the sequence a n approaches L as n becomes larger and larger so that we have the if we plot the sequence a n it will look like this it converges to L as n tends to infinity. Hence, we can see, uh, see from the figure that after a particular stage, that means I am calling this stage as n. This is A capital N. So, after a particular stage, every a n lies between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. Everything lies between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. Okay. That is when N is greater than capital N, we have L minus epsilon is less than A N less than L plus epsilon. And this is equivalent to say that modulus of A N minus L is less than epsilon. Hence, we say that limit of A N equal to L if for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number capital N such that modulus of a n minus l less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital N. Okay, this is limit of a sequence. Now, uh, just imagine I am having uh, a function uh, y equal to f of x. I have this function. So, I am uh, and suppose limit x tends to infinity f of x is equal to l you have studied um, limit at infinity so suppose that this is my l this is l and just imagine the graph of f of x we know that as x tends to infinity f of x approaches l so this maybe the graph may look like this suppose this is graph of f of x ok and I am taking a sequence a n I am taking a sequence a n I am defining a n as f of n the same function f so that um, if I take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. here, I have a1 is here, a2 is here, a3 is here, a4 is here, a5 is here, then I will have a6, a7, a8, a9, etc. So that it is easy to see that as limit n tends to infinity sequence a n also approaches l ok so limit n tends to infinity a n equal to l and limit x tends to infinity f of x equal to l looks similar if a n is equal to f of n this leads us to a theorem which is our first theorem on limits 
and the theorem states that theorem 1 on limits it states that if limit x tends to infinity f of x is equal to l and sequence a n is a sequence defined by a n equal to f of n for all n element of natural numbers then limit n tends to infinity a n will also be l the same limit of limit x tends to infinity f of x both will be same this is what theorem 1 says okay uh, let's think about the converse of this theorem that means suppose uh, a n is equal to f of n for some function f and limit n tends to infinity f of, um, sorry limit n tends to infinity a n is equal to l does it mean that limit x tends to infinity f of x is equal to l is it true let's see one example i'm taking sequence a n as sine of n pi so that means the sequence is sine pi which is 0 sine 2 pi which is again 0 sine 3 pi which is 0 etc so this is nothing but constant sequence 0 so that limit of a n is nothing but 0 now consider the function f of x is equal to sine pi x so that f of n is sine n pi which is our a n what about limit x tends to infinity um, f of x is it zero sin x tends to infinity f of x let's see uh, how the graph of sin pi x looks like we are considering this function from actually we need uh, the function from 1 to infinity only anyway here I have uh, 0 here I have 1 and 2 3 4 5 etc so what we are doing is we are plotting f of x equal to sin pi x so that graph of this will be we know that sine function will not exceed 1 similarly sine function will not go below minus 1 so the graph of this function will be like when we reach 1 it is 0 again when we reach 2 it is 0 when we reach 3 it is 0 etc so from the graph itself it is uh, we can uh, we can see that as x tends to infinity sin pi x oscillates between minus 1 and uh, plus 1 it does not go to a particular point so that we can say that limit x tends to infinity sin pi x does not exist this does not exist so limit of a n equal to 0 but limit of f of x as x tends to infinity it does not exist from this we can see that the converse of the theorem 
converse of this theorem is not true in general. Okay. Um, let's do some problems using this theorem in our next class. So, by then, study well.